hello everyone welcome back so in this video we will go for discussing another problem which is related to the preparation of cash budget this is a problem related to the cash budget so here the question they are asking you to prepare the cash budget for the month of may june and july 2019 on the basis of the following information in the first point they have given the income and expenditure forecast that is for the four six months that is from march to august they have given the estimations that is credit sales credit purchases wages manufacturing expenses office expenses and selling expenses all these estimations have been given and they have given the information of second point is cash balance on first may is 2019 and the is rupees 8000 means they are giving the opening balance for the month of uh, may so now for the remaining months you have to calculate based on your uh, calculation of cash budget and the third one is uh, plant costing rupees 16000 is due for delivery in july payable 10 percent on delivery and balance after three months it means the original cost of the plant is 16000 but it is ready for delivery in july and on delivery they will go for paying only 10 percent that is 16000 into 10 percent 1600 will go for paying in the month of july and the remaining balance will go for paying after three months and the fourth point is advance tax of 8000 each payable in march and june means in the month of march and june you'll go for paying the advance tax of 8000 where here we are preparing budget for only the may june and july so we'll not consider the tax paid in the month of march and fifth point is period of credit allowed by suppliers is two months and to customers is one month means here we are having credit purchases and credit sales so suppliers indicates for credit purchases and customers for credit sales so for customers the company is providing one month time to repay the amount but and the supplier is providing two months time for the company and the sixth point is lag in payment of manufacturing expenses is half month means whatever the total manufacturing expenses you will be having every month half of that will be paid in the current and half of that will be paid in the next month like that will go for paying the manufacturing expenses and lag in payment of office and selling expenses is one month means office and selling expenses will go for paying one month lately that is this month payment will be made in the next month so this is the information what they have given and asking you to prepare the cash budget for the three months preparation of the cash budget first item we have to go for recording is the opening balance so here we are preparing the cash budget for the month of may june and july so we have to go for the opening balance but in the problem they have given opening balance for only the month of may that is the amount is 8000 that is the opening balance what they have given in the problem so we don't know the opening balance of june and july so first you have to calculate the for the month of may and whatever the closing balance you will get for the month of may that will be considered as the opening balance of june and further as same so now once after the completion of recording opening balance now we'll go for writing all the cash receipts so that is the second step in the preparation of cash budget so first we'll go for writing the opening balance and then we'll go for writing the receipts so in this problem we are having only the receipts of debtors that is in case of credit sales the customers who has to pay the amount to the company they are called as the debtors so that is the only thing what we are having in this problem as the receipts so that is the debtors will come from the credit sales so now here the credit sales the debtor the, they have given some condition in point f fifth point period of credit allowed for suppliers is two months and for customers is one month so now debtors is the customers the people who has to pay the amount to the company so for customers they are giving a time for uh, time period of one month for the payment of debt amount that is whatever the credit sales they have gave taken so that is the one month time period they are giving so now for the month of may we will go for recording the credit sales amount of april because for the april amount they are they will go for paying in the next month that is in the month of may that is the meaning of that sentence 
period of credit allowed to customers is one month means they can pay the amount within a time period of one month if they are taking goods in the month of may they can have to pay the amount in the month of june if they are taking in the month of june they have to go for paying in the month of july so in the same way the amount which you have to record in the may is the amount which should be paid in the month of april so the credit sales amount in the month of april is 62000 that is paid in the month of may and the amount of credit sales in the month of may is 64000 which will be paid in the month of june and the amount of credit sales in the month of june is Fifty-eight thousand. So that should be paid in the month of July. So like that, one month time period will be given for the customers to repay the credit sales amount. Now we are not having any other receipts in the problem. So now you have to go for making the total of opening balance and whatever the receipts we are having. So that is the total. We will consider it as the total of A. So sixty-two thousand plus eight. So we'll get the total of seventy thousand. So now, whatever the total we got, so for this, so now we have to go for the recording of cash payments. So we have recorded the cash receipts. So now we have to go for recording the cash payments. So whatever the payments you are giving, so all those payments should be recorded here. So payments first we'll go for recording the creditors. So means. This indicates for the credit purchases whatever we have made. So again, here in credit for creditors also they are giving the time period of two months. That means whatever the amount they have to pay in this month, that will be paid after two months. If the amount if the purchases has been in made in the month of May, but the amount will be paid in the month of July. That is the two months of time period they have given. On May first, if you are purchasing goods, on July first you have to go for paying the amount. So whatever the amount you have to pay in the month of May, that will be paid in the month of July. Whatever the amount you have to pay in April, that should be paid in June. Whatever the amount you have to pay in the month of March, that should be paid in the month of May. So two months of time period is allowed for the credit purchases. That is suppliers. So now. First, for the month of May, we are recording thirty-six thousand. That is the credit purchases amount in the month of March. And now, in the month of April, we are having thirty-eight thousand. So that will be recorded under the June. And in the month of May, we are having thirty-three thousand as the credit purchases. So that will pay in the month of July. So like that, we'll go for paying the creditors or credit purchases amount. So now, after creditors, we are having the wages. So in additional information, they have not given any adjustments for the wages. So directly go for writing the wages. Wages for the month of May is ten thousand, for the month of June eight thousand five hundred, and for the month of July nine thousand five hundred. So next, we'll go for writing the manufacturing expenses, which is given in the problem. manufacturing expenses so again they are giving one more condition for manufacturing expenses the condition is sixth point lag in payment of manufacturing expenses is half month means the whatever the manufacturing expenses we are giving for each and every month so half amount will be paid in lag that means whatever the month so for example if you take the amount of for the month of june may itself so what is the manufacturing expenses which should be paid in may half amount will be paid in may half amount will be paid in june so next month so for next month total half will be paid in june half will be paid in july so here now half amount of june and half amount of may will be present so for the month of may we'll go for taking half amount of april and half amount of may so the total manufacturing expenses of april is 3000 half in 3000 is 1500 plus and total manufacturing expenses of may is 4500 half in that is 2250 so total will become the 3750
manufacturing expenses like that they are saying lag in payment of manufacturing expenses half month means whatever the amount we have to pay every month as manufacturing expenses half amount will be paid in the current month and half amount will be paid in the previous month so now here we are taking the manufacturing expenses half amount from the previous month and half amount from the current month for next year also half amount from may and half amount from the june current month so that is for here half amount from april that may that is 2250 and manufacturing expenses for the month of june is 3500 so half will become the 1750 so now the total will become 4000 4000 and next for the month of july so half whatever the half pending here that will be taken here so 1750 plus and whatever the original manufacturing expenses we are having in the july and those original we will go for taking half so original manufacturing expenses of july is 2000 so we'll go for 4000 and half will be considered that is now 3750 so like this the condition is like this we'll go for recording manufacturing expenses like this so next we'll go for recording office expenses so again there is a condition for office and selling expenses So that is the lag in payment of office and selling expenses is one month. That means the amount which should be payable in this month will go for paying in the next month. So uh, means in the month of May we have to record the uh, office expenses and selling expenses of April because April will be paid in May, May with, uh, expenses will be paid in June, June expenses will be paid in June. So that is the meaning of that one. Lag in payment of selling and office expenses is one month. So now office expenses in the month of April is 1500. In the month of June is 2500. In the month of July is 2000. So that is the previous month office expenses will be recorded in the uh, cash budget. Now selling expenses also same. So for the month of May we will go for recording selling month uh, selling expenses of April. For the month of June, we will go for recording the selling expenses of May. And for the month of July, we will go for recording the selling expenses of June, 3500. So, after selling expenses, we are having one, two more payments. That is, payment for the plant. So, plant payment. So, that is the second point. So, plant costing 16,000 is due and uh, due for delivery in july so means whatever the plant you are purchasing the amount is due and the plant will be delivered in the month of july 10 percent is payable on delivery and balance after three months that means out of total 16,000 10 percent that means 1600 you will pay in the delivery so the plant will be delivered in the month of july so 1600 you will pay in the delivery time period and the remaining amount will go for paying in the further three months so we are not preparing for further cash budget so we are recording only 1600 and the next one is we are having the tax amount that is advance tax so they are saying that advance tax of 8000 rupees each payable in march and june means in the month of march and in the month of june we are paying advance tax of 8000 rupees but here we are preparing budget for only may june and july so march will not be considered only in the month of june will go for recording the tax of 8000 so now we have recorded all the payments so now make the totals so total of payments that is 36000 10000 3750 1500 and 5000 the total will become 56250 So now the total of payments is 56,250. So now we have got the total of receipts, total of payments. Now you should know the, what is the closing balance. 
closing balance can be calculated total of receipts minus total of payments that is a minus b so 70000 minus 56250 so you will get 13750 as the closing balance so now whatever the closing balance you are having so this closing balance will be considered as the opening balance for next month that is for the month of july will go for considering as the opening balance so now make the total of these two so that is 13750 plus 64000 you will get 77750 so now already all the payments we have recorded so make the total of all the payments you will get 65500 so now the closing balance is so 77750 minus 65500 you will get 12250 so this will become the opening balance for the next month 12250 so now opening balance plus receipts so you will get total of 70250 So already we have recorded all the payments for the month of July also. Make the total of all the payments. You will get fifty-three thousand three fifty. So now the closing balance will be seventy thousand minus two fifty minus fifty-three thousand three fifty. So now the difference is seventy thousand two fifty minus fifty-three thousand three fifty is sixteen thousand nine hundred. So this is how we'll go for making the preparation of cash budget.